In this program, Escape from Slavery, we look at communities of Africans who reconstructed what they could of their African heritage through agriculture, religion, music, cuisine, and daily activities. We will show how these communities made an accommodation to the Americas and how they continued to survive up to the present day. The Portuguese used slave labor to build the Royal Highway from the sea way under the interior where the gold was. They brought African slaves to do that. The slaves themselves often organized, escaped, and formed their own communities, which were called quilombos. Several of them remain in the Atlantic Forest. Campinho Quilombo is a community located in Parachi, south of Rio de Janeiro, on the coast. Today, approximately 150 families, or 500 people, live here. Our ancestors arrived here over 200 years ago. There has always been a historic struggle over land. This struggle ended in 1999, when the Quilombo received title to this land. It was after slavery ended that these lands continued to produce coffee and sugarcane. But the soil here was poor, so the landowners abandoned the land and donated it to the three women who worked here as house servants. They had a special relationship with the landowners, so these lands were given to them. These are the oldest women in the community. We have to be thankful for everything that we have is because of them. They have taught us everything about the struggle, how to live, how to make herbal medicine. Some plants are good for making tea. They showed us everything and passed on their knowledge to us. These lands have been passed on from one generation to the other, and we are now in our sixth generation. So today we talk about slavery from a happy perspective, because we are free. We have been working with community-based tourism for almost 10 years. Tourism is important to us because it creates wealth in this community. We have always worked the land without using agrotoxins or chemical fertilizers. We continue to work the land in this way. This material we use a lot here at the store. It is a straw that we collect in the forest. Here we have a store full of arts and crafts. That was a dream of my mother, Magdalena. We used to sell our handiwork in the center of town. Now we have a large group here in the store. We sell directly to the consumer. Today is much better, because before, people had to go out of the community to work, but now they can stay and work from home and sell their crafts. And we also use the food we produce in our community restaurant, so we are working with agroecology to bring the outside into the restaurant. It's being done in a sustainable way to keep the farmers doing their job and bringing those foods to the table for the outside visitors and most importantly, for the people in our community. So, if we continue to work in the right way, we will create a better future for our children. If we plant the right seed, the good things will come. We will harvest the fruits of all that work. Early the next morning, we set out from Cartagena to the countryside and a distant colony founded by escaped slaves. Oiga, mujer, contemplame mi dicha. No me abandone por ti mi corazón. Mira, mujer, estate tranquila. Yo sufro mucho y para siempre te dolor. Colombia has experienced violent conflict throughout its history. More recent, since perhaps 20 or 30 years, uh, the paramilitary groups have displaced populations and today Colombia has about 5 million people that have been displaced. 
In San Basilio Palenque, there are about 70 families who were displaced in 2001. The paramilitaries arrived and without much notice, in fact, uh, it was the primary school that sent letters to the families saying that they had 24 hours to leave the region because the paramilitaries were coming in. So they had to take everything and leave. Uh, they had to abandon their houses and their land and they moved to the core of uh, San Basilio. Some of the families in San Basilio that have been displaced are now getting their lands back through a plan of the present government uh, that is giving land back to displaced population. So apparently that uh, policy has had a positive impact in the past few years. But most of the displaced, or all of them, lost their land for about eight years. What is ironic is that they are being displaced by the same economic forces that would have enslaved them 300 years ago. San Basilio Palenque is a town a couple of hours away from Cartagena. More than a million slaves passed through Cartagena. Some of them escaped and founded this town. The town is so different from others that it has been recognized by UNESCO as a place of intangible heritage. Some of the older people in town still remember the old ways and carry on the heritage. One of them is Maestro Rafael. The town of San Basilio Palenque originated with Bencos Bioo, who was the founder. Bencos Bioo. Well, Bencos arrived here because the Spaniards went to Africa to look for black people to work in Cartagena, and they brought Bencos and his people. Bencos was brought with his family and his companions. He was the leader of this group, but they were very unhappy with labor conditions in Cartagena. So he spoke with his mates and told them, men and women, here we are treated miserably. Prepare yourselves because we're living at dawn. Gather what you have so that we can leave at daybreak, when it is quiet. In the wee hours before dawn, they gathered their belongings, and while everyone in Cartagena was sleeping, they left looking for the path to this place. So they left, and when they arrived here, they went past the hill. When they arrived to the site where we have the plaza with his statue, he told them, we can make our settlement here. And they started clearing the forest, getting wood to make houses, and began to settle. The Spaniards went out looking for them. They looked everywhere but couldn't find them. Much later, after Bencos and his people were well settled and never went out again, the Spaniards found out where they were and started looking for them. They remained hidden for many years. I cannot tell you how many. It was many years. They told Queen Elizabeth that they were going to kill them all. The Queen, who was the one in command in Spain, told them that they could not be killed because the ones that ran away at some point obeyed. So they should bring them food instead of looking for them to kill them. So food was brought and little by little Bencos relaxed, thinking that he was not going to be harmed. So he went to Cartagena and there, in a meeting, Bencos was murdered. Nations throughout the Americas like to commemorate the dates in which they legally abolished slavery. In Colombia in 1851, the United States 1865, and Brazil in the late 1870s. But as this statue shows, the reality was that the slaves broke their own chains and made themselves free. This language was Bencusis. 
the language that he brought from Africa, from Guinea. We have a lot of natural medicine, a lot of medicinal plants that almost everyone here knows about, since these plants have been here since Bencos found the place. The Tabala Sexteto started here in 1930. Of course, this is the culture that Bencos gave us. That culture that we have, the culture was brought by Bencos, the founder. That is our culture that we have. The first music that arrived here was Bencos Lumbalú. After that came the Bullerengue. Later on, after the Bullerengue, came the Gaita. After the Gaita, in the 1930s, came the Sexteto de San Basilio de Palenque. The guys here, they asked a local carpenter to make the marimba. The bongos were cut out of wood and they were covered with goat skin, the same as the timba. The maracas were made out of tutumo. The huacharaca is made out of tin, that metal over there, tin. And they formed the group. And I don't think that in the world there is such a great culture as the one from San Basilio Palenque. The two samples that you've seen from Brazil and Colombia demonstrate this rich heritage and how important it is that it be presented to a broad audience. With your support, we can do additional programs covering Mexico and Cuba, and in this way, make the heritage of escape from slavery a vital part of everybody's knowledge of this hemisphere.